watching this video, you're watching this video for that good, 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 that good information, and of course to relax, but in your relaxation, you're getting smarter, right? Right? The average person has 10,000 taste buds, and yet people still like tomatoes. And let Google Translate do the job for you. I mean, hold tight, Bill Gates and his wife, they recently divorced, but he made, wait, Bill Gates didn't make Google Translate. Never mind. Now, I don't like this fact because I feel a little bit betrayed. We've been fed a lot of honeybee propaganda, save the bees and whatnot. For every M&M you eat, you have to run the entire length of a football field to burn it off. That, to me, sounds like a scam. You're telling me that one shitty M&M I have to run, what, what's a football field? 100 yards, 200 yards? What is American saying? What, 100 yards to burn off one shitty M&M? You gotta be shitting me. Dig this. Wearing headphones for just one hour will increase the bacteria in your ear by 700 times. Quick maths, right? I know that a majority of us fall asleep to ASMR videos. And if that's true, if we fall asleep and fall asleep for an average of eight hours a day, eight times 700, We, we, we should probably clean our ears way more often than anyone else. Dig this. Moths. Moths are unable to fly during earthquakes. Some of these facts when I was reading them earlier. They got me, they got me thinking. I mean, so the only way, one of the only ways this is even possible for you to know this is if there was an earthquake instead of you know focusing on getting yourself to safety you happen to be looking at a moth and you were wondering why it was not flying and then you came to the conclusion that damn maybe maybe moths just can't fly during earthquakes maybe the moth that you saw wasn't in the mood to fly maybe it was sleeping maybe it was dead who knows but how you come to the conclusion that moths can't fly during earthquakes is beyond me. Dig this one. The first US minimum wage, the first United States minimum wage law was instituted in 1938. The minimum wage, dig this, was 25 cents per hour. At that point, my guy, you're pretty much working for free. Minimum wage, that's no minimum wage. But if you were Ed, Ed and Eddie, you're only one hour away from that delicious jawbreaker that you guys, for, I don't know, six seasons, couldn't get your hands on. Take this one. Babies are born without kneecaps. They don't appear until the child reaches two to six years of age. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty funny. So when you have a newborn baby, if any of your relatives, if your mum, if your sister ever gives birth, if your auntie gives birth, the newborn, look at the baby's legs. You should see two relatively thin baguettes. 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 No point of pivot. No kneecap. That is hilarious. Babies are funny. You know, that makes sense though. I guess, I guess our knees, well, they have knees, right? They have the knee bone, the patella, but they don't have the cap. And they can't walk. They struggle to stand up. I guess the kneecap is very, very, very important when it comes to walking humans. It's very undervalued, very underrated. And that's proven in babies and their inability to walk. Dig this. Cauliflower dipped in barbecue sauce tastes almost the same as chicken nuggets and 
it's infinitely healthier. Now, that may be true, but I'll tell you what. If I ever walked into a restaurant and shout out to my vegan gang, you know what I'm saying? You guys, you guys are doing a solid job in the world, right? But if I ever walk into a restaurant and I order some chicken nuggets dipped in barbecue sauce and you brought me back some cauliflower, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna be upset with it. I mean, yes, the health benefits might be crazy, but cauliflower, and then on top of that, you're gonna charge me a chicken price for some really, really cheap cauliflower. No way, Jose. For all of my students, for all of my students watching this video, dig this. To proofread a long essay, paste your article in Google Translate and listen to it. This makes it easier to pick up mistakes and the tool itself can help you pick up minor typos. Life hacks as a college student, as a university student, even a high school student, if this is you and you ever need to proofread an article, Google Translate, copy and paste, I'm, I'm guessing in sections, because if you have a 2000 word essay then that's just tough, but in sections, copy and paste into Google Translate and let Google Translate do the job for you. I mean, hold tight, Bill Gates and his wife, they recently divorced, but he made, wait, Bill Gates didn't make Google Translate. Never mind. Listen, listen, just a quick intermission. I know, I know, I know all of you guys watching this video, at least 95% of you have YouTube accounts, which means you have the ability to like videos Why you're watching my videos without liking them that's beyond me so do the boy a favor and click the like button maybe you guys forget me personally i personally forget to like videos sometimes it's normal right but here's the reminder like the video before you fall asleep you 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 like the video dig this the honeybee kills more people worldwide than all poisonous snakes combined now, I don't like this fact because I feel a little bit betrayed. We've been fed a lot of honeybee propaganda, save the bees and whatnot. You know, wasps, wasps have received a very bad reputation from all of us around the world. I guess honeybees are doing a solid job, right? Pollinate the flowers, you know, pollinate the world, I get it. And wasps are just dicks because they just, they just sting for the fun of it, you know, I get it. But if honeybees have killed more people worldwide than all poisonous snakes, then why do we hate snakes so much? Why is a snake attributed to someone who is sly and someone who, you know, does does some fucked up shit, you know, double crosses niggas? Like, why is that the case? If a honeybee is more harmful to humans, to us, we need to get our priorities straight, man. This is a good one, dig this. Each king in a deck of playing cards represents a great king of history spades king david clubs alexander the great hearts charlemagne no idea who that nigga is but diamonds julius caesar julio caesar julio right that's pretty cool i didn't really realize that but um I guess this is why you're watching this video. You're watching this video for that good, 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 that good information and of course to relax. But in your relaxation, you're getting smarter, right? Right? Dig this one. The swastika was. Wow, this this guy really can't spell. How you misspell originally so badly is beyond me. But the swastika was originally a symbol of peace and honor and is still used today by Buddhists. Hitler and them Nazi boys, they were really fucked up people. I mean, they, they took something, if this is true, they took something that meant peace and honor and turned it into just fuckery. You know, if, if Hitler was alive today, and I saw him, let's say I was on my way to Little or Sainsbury's and I saw Hitler walking down the street. Hitler would receive a three-piece and a soda. And if you don't know what a three-piece and a soda is, Google that. Did you know that it takes plastic over 50,000 years to start decomposing? 
I mean, hold tight the turtles, save the turtles, but the only problem with that is the solutions that people have to replacing plastic, they're all pretty arse. Just look at takeaway containers, for instance, the plastic ones that you get Chinese food in and rice meals and stuff like this, right? What other material would you use if you used paper? That sucks. Those, those little styrofoam things, that could work to a certain extent. But you know what just doesn't work? Paper, straws, they suck. Dig this one. The earth is presently inhabited by 1.4 million species of animals and half a million species of plants. Now, I remember back in the day watching a grade A under A video on the animal kingdom. And in the video, he mentioned that scientists had somehow came across 11,000, something like this, 11,000 different species of ants. And I was like, bro, first of all, these scientists need to find something better to do. But if you're telling me that on this wonderful green earth, that there are 11,000 very, very distinctively different types of ant. In my lifetime, me personally, I've only seen one type of ant. They have six legs, three blobs for a body. They're black. They have black ants, red ants, fire ants. Okay, two types of ants. But to think 11,000, first of all, I can't even count to 11,000 in, 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 in three days. So how the hell? I mean, come on, man. You guys are doing a good job out there, you know, I, I appreciate you scientists, but you can't take us for fools. Dig this, koala fingerprints are so close to humans that they can taint crime scenes. You know, I think I, I, think I heard about this fact a long time ago and I've been thinking about this a lot. In my spare time I just be thinking about koalas and shit, but koalas, like... If, if, if you if you believe in the whole evolution thing it makes you wonder like how are we first of all I have an iPhone in my hand right now right and an iPhone even if I had a twin brother a twin brother my twin couldn't get into my iPhone my iPhone 8 right he couldn't get into my my iPhone 8 if I had touch ID on it, that is how different our fingerprints are. My twin brother wouldn't have the same fingerprint as me. But a totally different species in koala can have fingerprints so similar to human fingerprints that it can take a crime scene like they have very, very similar fingerprints to us. Like how, how did nature do that? How did, you know, are we, are we distant cousins to koala? That would be pretty cool. This the female pigeon cannot cannot lay eggs if she is alone. In order for her ovaries to function, she must be able to see another pigeon. Now, again, if you subscribe to the theory of evolution, it makes you wonder where, like, what is the evolutionary advantage of that being the case? Because I mean, it must evolve from something. It must come from something. There must have been pigeons, you know, survival of the fittest, right? There must have been pigeons, or female pigeons, who were giving birth in the darkness, I guess. Giving birth on their ones, on their Jack Joneses. And, and that was clearly a, a, a natural disadvantage. So the female pigeons that always were keeping an eye on people, and looking at people, and then giving birth, they somehow survived. And now it becomes an innate thing. That is how the theory of evolution works, you know, natural selection over there thousands and thousands of years. But I do wonder, these pigeons are, I mean, there's, there's pigeons all over the world. Yeah, whatever. I dig this, you probably knew this already, you know. My very easy method just speeds up naming planets. Even though Pluto is no longer a planet, so the P doesn't make sense anymore, but... Venus is the only planet in the solar system to spin backwards. 
Now, when I was a kid, I learned that Venus was very, 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 very similar to Earth, but it just spins backwards. I, I am a physics, I'm a physics boy. I like, I love physics, right? And it just gets you thinking about, you know, gravity and, you know, orbits. I mean, I guess Venus goes in the same direction as all the other planets around the Earth. I mean, the sun, right? But why does it? on its own axis spin backwards relatively to every single planet in the solar system it's strange venus is an outlier venus i guess is a drama queen because that's just unnecessary backwards you think you think that on venus there'd be a lot of things backwards you know time you know the people on venus are probably very horrible people you know they probably sleep to wake up everything's reversed on venus why would you spin backwards you know what, Venus, just fix your shit. You're not special, just just, just spin in the same direction as all the other planets. Look what we did to Blue, Blue's not a planet no more. You don't want them NASA boys taking your planetary status away. Just, just be cool, chill. Dig this pretty simple fact right here. Listening to music, listening to music utilizes the entire brain. Listening to music utilizes the entire brain, you know. The brain is very strange. We have we have a north, we have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. One's emotional and one is very, very logical. Human brain's kinda crazy when you think about it. I'll type the brain, but music, music utilizes the entire brain and you can tell that this is true when you see babies and their reactions to their favorite songs. You see babies, babies feel the same way we do. they're so small and their brains are so underdeveloped i guess but their reaction to music their reaction to their favorite songs should prove to you that this fact right here is true dig this one tigers not only have striped fur but they also have striped skin now you've probably heard the saying that a leopard doesn't change its spots so i think that leopards are in the same boat as our friend the tiger they have spotty skin and spotty fur striped skin and striped fur dig this the average person the average person has ten thousand taste buds again how the fuck do people know that shit how how so so I guess maybe you tested like a thousand people, hopefully it was a good amount of people, you tested like a thousand people, I'm, 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 I'm so certain you did not count 10,000 each time, right, so you took a certain measurement, you took a certain count of a certain area, and then you tried to extrapolate the data, I understand how it works, but come on, 10,000 taste buds, dig this one, in the USA, there are more toilet flushes at halftime of the Super Bowl than any other time of the year. Wow. You know what's crazy about the Super Bowl? You know, people people don't really realize how many fucking people watch the Super Bowl every single year. The last two years, the ratings have been down. But other than that, I'm talking 2014, 2013, the Super Bowl was absolutely crazy. An Eminem advert, an Eminem advert, an advert for Eminem's the chocolate. The Eminem advert, the Eminem company ended up paying somewhat like eighteen million dollars for a thirty-second ad. Eighteen million dollars for a thirty-second ad. How many people are watching the fucking Super Bowl? To finish off this video probably have a part two part three i do have another facts video on this channel go check it out if you haven't seen it already if this is the first facts video that you've seen from me i do have another one but to finish off this video it does make sense for us to finish off with an eminem fact i mean the last one was an eminem fact right unless when i'm in post-production i change it around but i probably won't la, 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 la. but for every eminem you eat you have to run the entire length of a football field to burn it off. That to me sounds like a scam. You're telling me that one.
one shitty Eminem. I have to run. What? What's a football field? A hundred yards? Two hundred yards? What these Americans saying? What? A hundred yards? To burn off one shitty Eminem? You gotta be shitting.